خاموشی پشت هست تو قامولی Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to create the illusion of control over the events in the Kursk region. To do this, he exaggerates the successes of Russian troops in this region and sometimes even openly lies. In particular, in an interview with the Russian propagandists on October the 25th, Putin again stated that 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region were allegedly surrounded by Russians. This was noted by the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. Talking to propagandists of the state Russian TV channel Russia One, the dictator again repeated the thesis voiced on October the 24th at the closing of the BRICS summit about the alleged encirclement of 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region. This time, he embellished the statement with the assertion that the encircled Ukrainian soldiers do not even understand that they are surrounded. Putin also added that the connection between the encircled units and the main Ukrainian forces had allegedly been lost and stated that the Russian Defense Ministry had not publicly reported the successful capture of some Ukrainian positions in the Kursk region by Russian troops. Putin again did not admit that the Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region extends from the Ukrainian-Russian international border and that Ukrainian troops can freely pass through sections of the border controlled by Ukraine. The ISW added, at the same time after Putin's first statement about the encirclement of Ukrainian soldiers and the fact that they allegedly suffered significant losses, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky, made a public refutation of the Russian dictator's words. Sirsky also announced the losses that Putin's army had suffered in the Kursk region since the beginning of the Ukrainian operation. During this time, Russia has lost 17,819 of its servicemen, 711 of whom were captured by the defense forces. Putin's exaggerated statistics on Ukrainian casualties are likely part of his attempts to explain Russia's failure to decisively repel the Ukrainian invasion of the Kursk region after almost three months in the context of the likely imminent deployment of North Korean troops to fight in the area, the ISW concluded. Georgian President Salome Zurabishvili does not recognize the results of the parliamentary elections in the country in which, according to the Central Election Commission, the pro-Russian party Georgian Dream won. The Georgian leader said the expression of will was totally falsified and the Georgian people became victims of a Russian special operation. She said this at a joint press conference with representatives of the opposition. The president thanked every Georgian voter who voted for the country's European future and noted that recognizing the election results was impossible, as this would be tantamount to recognizing Russia's arrival in Georgia and the country's subordination to the Kremlin. This is not why I came to this country. This is not why our ancestors lived, and we will not accept this. She added, the president called on citizens to come out to protest. Recall Vladimir Putin was accused of helping steal power in Georgia via the back door after elections marred by vote buying, ballot stuffing and violence. 
It is the second time in a week that Russia is said to have had a hand in meddling with a vote in a Western-leaning state after Moldova's EU election was heavily skewed. Various international observers raised concerns of widespread irregularities in Georgia's voting, which appeared to give the ruling pro-Russian Georgian Dream Party the edge despite polls showing the opposite. Two Jordan opposition political forces, the United National Movement and the Coalition for Changes, declared following the parliamentary elections that the ruling Georgian Dream Party carried out a constitutional coup and are refusing to enter parliament despite overcoming the 5% barrier. The leaders of these parties said that their representatives do not intend to receive mandates. The picture emerging from Georgia is clear. Election has been stolen by Putin's puppet government in Tbilisi, Boris Johnson said, according to The Telegraph. I back the people of Georgia as they stand up for their freedom, their rights and their future, he added. Georgian Dream, led by billionaire oligarch Bidzina Ivanishvili, won about 54% of the vote, according to the country's Central Election Commission. But the pro-Western opposition has refused to accept the result and accused Ivanishvili and his party of stealing the election, which may decide the country's future in the EU. Israel achieved all its objectives in its attack against military targets in Iran, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, while Iranian leaders said the country would respond to the strikes. Israel says it hit 20 military targets Saturday in what it called a limited attack that nonetheless degraded Iranian air defenses and weapons facilities. We have severely struck Iran's defense capabilities and its ability to produce missiles, Netanyahu said Sunday at a memorial for the victims of the October 7, 2023, Hamas attack on Israeli communities near Gaza. The attack on Iran was precise and powerful, achieving all its objectives, Netanyahu said. Due to the Israeli strike, Iran will probably not be able to supply Russia with new ballistic missiles anytime soon. An important consequence of the Israeli strikes on Iran is that Iran will not be able to supply ballistic missiles to Russia for many months until it restores its production capacity. Writes Israeli Middle East expert and Haaretz journalist Anshul Pfeffer in X. In addition, Tehran will no longer be able to supply ballistic missiles to Hezbollah and Houthis terrorists. According to media reports, Israel has disabled 12 installations that are used to produce fuel for ballistic missiles, which make up a significant part of Iran's arsenal. It may take at least a year to produce new installations. Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkian told Iran's Council of Ministers on Sunday that the country will give an appropriate response to the strikes, state media reported. We are not seeking war, but we will defend the rights of our nation and our country, he said. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, supreme leader of the Islamic Republic, called the strikes a mistake by Israel in its calculation regarding Iran. Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant, meanwhile, said the war is being conducted without a clear compass. The significant developments, foremost among them the direct exchanges, increase the need to hold discussions and update the war objectives, he wrote in a letter to the cabinet. A spokesperson for Netanyahu called the letter highly perplexing. Israel's war objectives are constantly reviewed and were even recently expanded, the spokesperson said. 